All right, good afternoon, everybody. Um, please take a seat. I think we're at the last of our panel today. And I think it's probably gonna be the most interesting one because we actually have a lot of traditional investors um, that are very active in Silicon Valley. And we'll talk about why they got into blockchain and you know what's happening in there. So everybody should come back in now. But yeah, in the meantime, I'd like to welcome all my panelists for today. Um, if you will all come onto stage. First, we have um, Dr. Hong. Yeah. Hong Miao. Dr. Miao. Yeah. Here, here's oh, a okay. um, microphone. You should just take a seat first. Let's just have everybody come up. And Dr. Joe, founder of Dr. Chang. Alex. Best enough. Take a seat. I'll have you guys introduce yourselves. And Mr. John, Eugene, yes. All right, um, you guys have the microphone. So I'm just going to kick off this panel by having everyone do a little brief introduction of themselves. All right, how about, let's start. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Miao Hong. I am from the uh, Silicon Valley Future Capital. Our fund is uh, in uh, Palo Alto and is focused on the early stage of the uh, AI, blockchain, uh, life science. Uh, we invest a lot of our project in the blockchain and the AI. One of them is the uh, autonomous vehicle. And um, on the stage, the, uh, Alex uh, Besov, uh, he's doing the bit clip. He's also my uh, um, portfolio company too. Yeah, that's all for me. Hi, I'm uh, Hui Jun, Zhou, Zhou Hui Jun. I'm co-founder of Dr. Chen, and uh, uh, Dr. Chen is a healthcare information company that is using blockchain technology as well as AI to enable novel drug development. We have recognized that uh, genetics information as, uh, as well as electronic health record information are really important, and uh, uh, however, they haven't have that enough uh, method to um, protect the privacy of the individuals as well as facilitate exchange. That's the reason uh, we started the Dr. Chen and we have uh, teams in Silicon Valley in China as well as in Europe. Hi everybody, my name is Alex Bestenov. I'm a founder and CEO of Bitclave. Uh, we are a data privacy company uh, we have some uh, similarity to Dr. Chain. Uh, we're looking into uh, protection of data and ownership of data. We want to make sure that uh, data will shift from centralized locations like Google, Facebook to be decentralized and owned by people. And uh, we are a blockchain company. We started about a couple of years ago and uh, we raised some money uh, through the ICO last year. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Eugene Zhang, a uh, partner of TSVC, uh, formerly called the Teak Angel Fund, who have been investing in high tech, deep tech in the Valley for the past eight years with over 150 portfolio companies, uh, including Zoom, uh, Quanergy, and Ginkgo Bai, among um, uh, you know, over 100 companies. And since uh, last year, we have dipped into started to uh, look into uh, crypto uh, space. Uh, we actually, uh, in uh, 2014, invested in the, uh, the Taiwan's biggest exchange, uh, you know, called a mail coin. Um, so uh, early this year, we, after a, over a year study the space, we have concluded that we must use different uh, philosophy to invest. So we have just launched uh, TSVC Crypto uh, to try to uh, make a different uh, kind of different approach for in this space. And I'm also your moderator for today. My name is Grace. I'm the partner at Silverblock Capital. Um, we're a fund that's dedicated to investing in the crypto space. And I'm also um, chief strategy officer for BTOKEN, which, so it's a, which is a decentralized Airbnb. And you can find the booth outside as well. So 
Um, our panel today is very um, interesting and because I think most of us, well actually ev all of us, came from a very traditional background, um, meaning the investors, they were investing in traditional tech, hardcore tech and equity investments. And then of course there's um, Dr. And, and Dr. Joe, and, I mean obviously, um, you know, PhD in, in genetic engineering, like from the traditional medical space. So my first question to you guys is, for the investors, what got you into looking at blockchain and crypto? And for the entrepreneurs, why did you explore a blockchain um, technology? Um, as a investors, uh, we are always uh, looking for uh, some new technology for the futures. Blockchain is, um, to me, is really a disruptive technology. Uh, it will change the world in the futures. But we have to um, looking for the deep tech. Uh, right now, I think blockchain technology is is, is over hot, and it's just like uh, IT industry in year two thousand, and we are looking for some. Um, team or product with a deep tech, with a strong team, they can really uh, develop the product and uh, deliver the product. So I, I always believe the new technologies because um, just like AI is a technology, blockchain is a technology, they will change the world. I, I, had, I, I firmly believe the, the, believe the has a trust to the blockchain technology. That's why I very um, pay attention to this, these sectors and uh, looking around, I review hundreds of projects and I invest more than um, 20 projects in this uh, blockchain industries. I still continue to spend a lot of time to talk to the uh, startup company to uh, review them, to, um, to try to find some new cool projects. My background is a medical genetist, and I have been working on study the DNA and its relationship with health and wellness for the past 20 years. Prior to start the um, Dr. Chen, I started a company called idna.com.cn. Right now, it's one of the largest um, precision medicine company in China, which offer genetic service um, to China in China, including newborn screening and the cancer risk testing. And uh, uh, we are in the space of uh, precision medicine and uh, searching for how do we discover um, new cancer treatment, like a gene editing based cancer treatment that would uh, target for the specific cancerous mutation that would uh, um, in the body. And uh, we found that the bottleneck really is in the data. We actually, first we start working on the artificial intelligence AI tools to enable the drug development. And then over the time we find that the bottle tech is there's not enough good quality data. Just the data generated by one company is not enough. Uh, there's also a lot of um, health information out there. However, um, it's just not the mechanism that be able to use it. And the uh, um, blockchain technology really got us very, very excited and uh, uh, for several folds. First fold is uh, it provide, uh, protect the privacy. There's not many trust out there for custom consumers to share their data. And it, 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 it gave the power to individuals, let them decide whether they want to share or not. And the second area, it really set up the mechanism. And if we're talking about the token economy, uh, they really have many, many parties in it, including pharmaceutical companies, including the uh, healthcare information companies, and including the researchers. And uh, that's, that's what got us here. I started to look at uh, blockchain uh, pretty much from the beginning, especially with Bitcoin. It was very interesting. I, I have uh, a security background and I was, I'm was i a cryptographer uh, by training. So I was looking at different uh, stages of Bitcoin, how it was progressing. And before Ethereum, uh, it was primarily financial tool and it was something that was interesting but was not really exciting for me. Um, I started to be more involved with blockchain maybe three, four years ago with Ethereum. Uh, and I started to see the potential of uh, what can be done with decentralized data. And uh, my, my background really goes into security. I was a chief security officer at LG. 
I worked uh, on many different products which touch privacy of data. And uh, the ownership of data is very interesting. Uh, we see uh, in last uh, couple of years, I think it's, we, we witness a lot of different hacks. We witness a lot of uh, data breaches. Uh, just a couple of days ago, Facebook, Facebook was breached for, uh, I mean, 50 million users were um, hacked. So the data ownership that exists today should change. We cannot trust without data to one single entity, even if it's like Facebook or Google. And uh, we truly believe that uh, as time uh, moves, the data will also change uh, its uh, ownership. Uh, we as people, we have a right for our data. We can uh, utilize it in much better ways than somebody else can do it for us. Um, and so for me, blockchain, that's a cornerstone of, of uh, the future. Uh, it's uh, where and how the data is stored and how it's protected. Um, and we're at the very beginning of this. I, I know that uh, we're working on this project for a couple of years, but uh, there's many, many years in front of us to start changing how uh, data is being treated. Um, I think medical is a very good example of uh, where of uh, data ownership uh, that can be uh, improved and can be uh, radically changed. Uh, but so it goes to financial data. It goes to any other type of data. We are currently looking into uh, insurance business, uh, where all of us get insurances for. Uh, for cars, for uh, life insurance, uh, and some other insurances, property insurances. And we share our data left and right with insurance companies. We get no rewards for that, and it's very difficult for us to find the right provider. Uh, with the technologies that we build, uh, we believe that this can change, uh, and we can get to the point where, as a user, I have more uh, control over how and when I share it, and then I get benefits every time when I do that. So that's um, you know what we do uh, in a nutshell, and I think for for me on the topic for blockchain, I'm very very interested in uh, how it's going to uh, develop. I think we're very early stages, and uh, I'm really looking forward for the future uh, and for the next two to maybe five years. Okay, so. Um Okay, so from my perspective, I think it's, uh, I'll try to describe it as um, kind of religion uh, for high tech. Um, so for everyone, I think, you know, either you, either you are an entrepreneur or investor, you have to kind of take some belief in this because so so many things are so few out in the future. If you don't, don't have a fundamental uh, kind of belief, it's very difficult uh, as we go, are going through this cycle. For example, to myself, um, you know, everybody re uh, you know read that article uh, on the white paper, all that. A lot of people get very excited on that. So, uh, to me, I think uh, you know, from my our experience, right, we see so much overhead. Uh, you know, organization uh, managers, directors, you know, VPs manage people, manage sales commission. So many uh, di dispute unnecessary. If it can be done in this religion called the code. I believe uh, it can solve a lot of, kind of get rid of a lot of overhead. Um, for example, also for, for our fund, we have exactly a spreadsheet to calculate our carry table for partners. Every deal is done, we have a formula, we put it in, uh, and then it calculates itself. No dispute, the minute you agree, it's there. We're not, it will never happen that when a deal comes, makes a lot of money, the partner says that this, I should have this portion. Oh, you said that, I, I, I thought you said this. That's my understanding, it's different from yours. It's causing a lot, a lot of uh, dispute. So from that angle, that little uh, application, you know, kind of converted my belief, I think so. So of course, there are a lot of other pieces uh, to this fundamental blockchain technology, or it's a new system or a social system, whatever you call it, or an economic system. So, so um, but in, anyway, it's, it's far beyond a piece of technology, right, if it pans out. So with that background, you know, we, we you know, the 
but there's a reality thing, right? What do you do as an investor? How to approach this space? You know, in the last during the last year, uh, uh, you know, we have I mentioned Mailcon. It's an exchange that was done many years ago. We didn't know it, just like a normal company, um, but uh, you know, you know, we dip into uh, projects like Zilliqa, Filecoin. Um, you know, quite a few, so try to learn this space. And it's really, really very, very different. Uh, and so much noise also. And then um, just like, uh, you know, if our, our experience uh, in the 2000, you know, a lot of uh, internet companies, they all went public, right? Bec uh, with the eyeball, with the viewership. And then by the time uh, it's to, uh, 2000, uh, second half of 2000, Lots of company disappeared because they did not have uh, revenue, uh, zero revenue. Uh, but we have the survivors of Amazon and eBay, that, that kind of uh, great companies. But today, the market, we have like a, uh, maybe hundreds of thousands. They'll go up and then go down. Everybody goes up and everybody goes down. Clearly, clearly, that's not a that's very early stage because you must simply don't know how to distinguish. The project are not a landing. You know, there's no use, your user, a real use, use case. That's why nobody knows what is going to happen. So until that settles, until that settles, like a 10% companies come back from the whatever the exchange, it, the market is still in this early exploring stage, and it's ch uh, posing challenges for, for investors, for example, how to pick the projects, and for entrepreneurs, you know, which one is eventually will be the winner. So we are still in this uh, early phase, very exci exci uh, you know, exciting phase, um, but in the uh, transition phase, that's my view. Yeah, thank you, Eugene. I think you brought up a really interesting point. Um, you talked about um, having a revenue for a company. I think um, one of the things that as a traditional equity investor we all look at is the business model and how does a company make money. So how have you, since you've obviously been investing in you know, crypto projects and blockchain projects, so do you actually look at the business model and what do you think um, should these companies actually have like a profit-making, profitable business model and do you, do you look for the revenue part as well? Yeah. So a lot of uh, you know, kind of hard. That's why we have to do a separate thing. Uh, for example, a traditional company, it takes a great company 10 years to at least to build it. Then you go IPO and the founders be, uh, financially are, got rewarded. They become investors, right? So it takes 10 years, 12 years to make that happen, right? But now the project is raising 100 million. So in one time period, the it start a company went public with lots of money and turned into investors in one shot. So that is happening. So how, this is just unbelievable, uh, amazing, uh, you know, kind of phenomena. And of course, a lot of projects just um, raise the money, they say, why do I need to do this 99.9% .9 of the work? It's like, that's a challenge, okay. So, but on the plus side, it gives you the money to do what you need to. That's original intention is to, to fund the project and so that I don't have to worry my living so that I promise to del deliver this project. So the, from that angle, I, I'm looking from, from the positive side. With that resource, you can turn, um, unrealistic, turn a story vision into reality. Although when you started, not much a thing. So it's, we cannot say it's fake or you know, but uh, when you have that resource, a great team can turn, over time, turn into a reali reality. That's what we are looking for. That means you have the money first, and then you build it. If you cannot build it, you can buy a company. That's also, also possible. Also okay for investor or as a company. So you don't have it, but with, when, if you can do very good campaign, raise the money, you can fill the gap and make the, your company from a pure story to rea reality. So that kind of team we look at because, but then of course, you know, uh, many companies, they are the story only, right? They, they, no execution, that's just so dangerous. So that's why <laughs> this is a uh, good use had this kind of thing so, uh, so, so crazy. Uh, but anyway, so answer a quick, uh, quick question. Um, that's why we also look at the second pattern, which is the company has grand vision. They can have a sell big vision. But also, the later on, over time, they have to execute 
and deliver, not only just raising the money and don't know what to, you know, have a story, but it's not a, uh, you know, kind of a, a believable, you know, kind of execution plan. Yeah, I think we've obviously, I mean, all of us here have um, seen or invested in many, many great projects that has really grand visions and great teams. But I think we're heading, I mean, this industry as a whole is heading into a stage where, as we all know, it's kind of the bear market right now. And um, a lot of people are saying it, it's very frothy in this space and there's a lot of, um, you know, people that are just taking the money and run. But what do you think is really necessary to take this industry and take all these projects to the next step? Like in terms of um, well, for the investors, like what do you think will actually take us into actual um, mass adoption or um, getting a product out there? And for the entrepreneurs, like what do you think is needed for you guys to actually build something that's usable? Anyone? I always looking for uh, the uh, big vision, and um, for example, the, the product team, they. They not just want to uh, initial coin offering ICO to raise a lot of money, and I, I think the team, if they really want to change the world and to uh, to take advantage of the uh, the opportunity, they should focus on the development, the product, and not not just fundraising and uh, take the money and run. I I I always. Looking for the uh, the team who has a deep technology, and they they really want to do something big and change the world. And I think the um, in right now I think it's it's very cold and in the bear market, but I think um, maybe one percent can survive and they can take the uh, the big huge market for the features. If they raise the money and then come down to the walls and do some solid work and uh, develop the product and get ready for the market. Win at last. So, whatever I invest, I invest the team. And the team should have a strong um, technical background. They, they really can, um, can, can deliver the product. So, that's, that's why I, I always focus on. Uh, not just focus on uh, the concept, the uh, the application, or or just the, because I I know all the um, application of the blockchain in different uh, scenario. But who can um, develop the product? Who can deliver the product? And the core technology and the core team is very important. Yeah. As crypto crypto company, we needed to give more values to our customers than traditional companies. So we always said for our customers who had uh, uploaded their genetic profile to the Dr. Chen exchange, we reward them three times. And the first time they would be rewarded when they uploaded, they would reward it with token. The second time, and um, uh, when pharmaceutical companies and are looking for the right participate for doing clinical trial, and uh, we would reward the people participate in that too. And the third time would be when there's a new drugs that are developed based on the information that um, for the, from the people who had provided, they would be rewarded as well. So um, thinking about the economy, yes, we, we need to have um, the, we needed to get the token economy right. Like we all know that 23 Me, and uh, which is more a centralized genetic database company, and the major farmer had to pay them 60 million for uh, 3,000 Parkinson disease patients' DNA data. That means each uh, each people had uh, um, would be uh, their data was sold for um, 30,000 and they got nothing. They, they basically they just <laughs> give it for free. Yeah, so in the Dr. Chen, in our system, I think it would be a win-win um, situation for the individuals as well as for the big pharma. So from uh, what I see, and I, I, uh, I was on a panel, I think about a year ago, and a, there was a different, very different market. Everything was going, going up, and everybody was very excited. 
And one of the questions was asked, how do you see the future? And I said that the next year is going to be very interesting because a lot of the ICOs that raise money will uh, probably go underwater. And uh, the point of, for me of 2018 was to see projects that actually will succeed, projects that will continue to push forward and will not disappear with money that they raised. And so I think right now we are going through this process. We, we see a lot of projects that uh, really kind of going and fading. We see a lot of projects that are focused on marketing only and trying to impress uh, potential investors and potentially get listed on more exchanges. And we see other projects that actually heads down working, trying to make uh, the product that they uh, promised, they uh, ICO'd on, what they actually initially had. And uh, I think this is the future is really uh, in, in the blockchain technologies around these projects, around the blockchain itself. You know, I think Ethereum is quite behind of what they promised to deliver. Uh, I still hope that uh, Vitalik and his team will uh, get their act together in the next uh, few years we'll see uh, much better scalability, much better uh, um, uh, speed and, and, and uh, uh, number of transactions. So I think overall, uh, I, I think that uh, the blockchain world continues to go forward and it will take maybe a few more years, but I'm pretty confident that we'll see a lot of uh, nice projects uh, succeeding and we'll see the next Amazon uh, coming out of this uh, uh, current iteration. Thank you. I, one last question to all of you. I just want you, four of you, to all just give me in one sentence. When do you think the bear market will end and what's going to get us out of it? One sentence. <laughs> um, one sentence, I don't know. Uh, but maybe the second sentence, uh, I, I uh, it, I would put a very big emphasis on scalability of infrastructure. So when we see Ethereum delivering on the promise, we'll see a lot of uh, changes in the market. I think from what I see right now, it will take some time. I think it probably will still go through a few uh, mini re recovery. <laughs> but eventually, I think the, to build a real uh, bull market, I think uh, many uh, the I see the company, just from the number perspective, many has to kind of really, really disappear to be the real bottom. Um, I kind of just, that's my, my view. But you know, who would that be? I don't know. Yeah, really, I, I, don't know. I do not know. Yeah, but it, it would take some time to, to really build the bottom. But in the mi middle, you have a rallies. Um, I think that a company that offer real value, created real value, will succeed even in bear market. So we believe in what we're doing, and um, um, we will go ahead. <laughs> when do you think we'll get out of their market? And if you think about broad one, probably three to five years. That's why when we interview the um, um, employees, we always ask, make sure you be able to not, you know, have your hopes too high, it's two to five years. But, uh, but uh, even in the bear market, a strong company are creating value, generate value for their investors. I think even in the bear market, still some strong companies, they, they're doing really well, good jobs. They still have good valuations uh, in, the, in the bear market. But blockchain, um, of all, is, is a disruptive technology. I think in the long run, it's bright features. I, I truly believe it in blockchain, I trust. <laughs> in blockchain, we trust. I think um, that's well said. Well, I think that uh, concludes our panel and also our um, event for today. Thank you all for coming. I think we're all here because we truly believe in the blockchain technology and we see this is a long term and the future of technology. So I encourage you all to actually um, look more into it and build a better product, build a better product and keep believing in this industry. Thank you all for coming. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.